this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Um, now, I was asked if I could give my opinion um, when I put that put out the introduction to the Q and A with Chicho and conversation with Chicho. I was asked, uh, and before that, actually, I was asked if I could give my opinion regarding the U.S. elections, uh, regarding Hillary and Trump. I might, what my take on that situation is. Um, so I agreed uh, to put together a video for this and um, basically this is my third take uh, of this video. I've already done two previous ones and they were long ones. I just went off on rants and rants and um, just talked about a lot of things, connecting a lot of dots and stuff like this. But I went down, um, I went too far down the rabbit hole. Um, because if I'm being asked about Hillary, the choice between Hillary and Trump, um, the conversation has to start at a, at another level. I, I can't really go down rabbit holes. So I've decided to do this for the third time. And this is the last one I'm going to do. Um, hopefully it turns out okay. Uh, otherwise there's going to be a lot of edits in it. Okay. Um, so just uh, a couple of heads up, um, as I mentioned in the intro video um, to this triple set that I put out uh, talking about geophysics, giving some advice and uh, doing the politics. As I mentioned in your intro video to this, um, if you're following me for ASMR, if you're following me for comic books, for food, for math, for any other um, if you're subscribed to my channel for any other reason, you probably want to skip this because um, I'm probably going to rustle some feathers. Uh, no matter, even even though it's going to be a very condensed version of a, what I've already shot, right? Um, because I'm trying to keep the politics to a minimum on my channel. Um, um, for I decided that from the beginning, right? Because I did, um, I have been blogging politics and economics. Uh, I started writing about politics and economics back in, I think, 2006, right? And I put out, put out together a lot of articles regarding politics and economics. And one reason I did that was because, um, uh, you know, just looking at the data, looking at the, because I'm, I'm an analyst at heart, right? I like data, I like charts, I like graphs. Uh, and just looking at that stuff, uh, building up to the mid 2000s, it was obvious where we're headed, right? So, um, so I basically had to write about politics and economics because when I was talking with people, uh, it didn't seem like a lot of people in my real life anyway online there were a lot of people that could see that wrote about what was coming in 2008 the economic collapse and sort of the uh, takeover not that it wasn't taken over before but the over takeover of wall street in our governance right so uh, i've written a lot about politics and economics before and i if you really want to know my thoughts then i'm gonna provide a link to uh, in the description of this video to the introductory article I put together on politics and that was um, that was the last article I put together on politics because I, after putting everything together I sort of you know uh, figured out for myself to to my satisfaction where we're headed for the next 5, 10, 15 years or so okay and I really wasn't interested in documenting any more of the carnage so i put it out put together an introductory video mentioning that this was going to be the last uh strictly geo geopolitics uh article that I was going to put out so i'll provide the link to that article that'll give you more of what i think um is going on uh, okay so i'm only going to hit on certain points in this in this video and there's only going to be a handful uh, i'm not going to go that down too deep into this because uh, I've written a lot about this. Um, as um, I made some notes here um, from what I did previously. Now, 
two things, the two of the most important things that we have to keep in mind regarding the U.S. elections, right? Uh, the questions I've been getting is Hillary or Trump, right? And I can honestly tell you, it's not about Hillary or Trump. They're irrelevant, right? Their handlers will control them, will tell them what they have to say and what needs to be done, okay? So it's not about Hillary or Trump. It's about you, right? If you're asking me about it, you know, who I prefer if it's Hillary or Trump, my question to you would be is, do you want the election to be based on fear or based on someone you like or love? Because <laughs> I've looked at the data. Uh, the percent of the people that really like Trump and the percent of the people that really like Hillary is very low. Like, the people that really like Trump are maybe anywhere between 15 to 20 percent of people that he's that are supporting him same with hillary there are there aren't very many people that really like hillary because with the internet with the with the you know sort of the free access to information and everything that's come out um you would have had to have been deaf dumb and blind to really like hillary no offense to anyone, of course, right? Uh, it just basically means you haven't really looked into who she is. And the same goes for Trump. Um, you know, people are voting for Trump. Like the mainstream media is, you know, uh, portraying all of Trump's supporters as racist, uh, xenophobic, and all this jazz, right? Gun-wielding yahoos, right? But that's not the case. The majority of people that are supporting Trump are not what the mainstream media is portraying, right? And the majority of people supporting Hillary are not your lovey-dovey progressive uh, people. The people who are supporting Hillary and Trump are supporting Hillary and Trump based on fear, right? And both of them are running on that, right? Uh, as far as numbers goes, um, you know, I'll leave that up to you, but Clinton has a hard time filling a church. Trump is packing stadiums, right? So the polls are irrelevant as well. Uh, they're controlled. Okay. And if you want to know how, how irrelevant the U.S. elections are and are going to be and have been set to be from this election on really it started out in the past but this one really set it in stone is uh the u.s elections were already stolen right like from the dnc top management of the dnc resigned because of this right it was fraud scam committed so you know the democratic and republican conventions who they're going to nominate to represent both parties are basically the second largest elections in the United States. So for the DNC, Democratic National Convention, right? For the Democratic Party, the second largest elections in the United States where tens of millions of people voted, that was fraudulent. That was a scam. That was stolen. And nothing was done about it, right? So the U.S. election has been deemed irrelevant. It really doesn't make a difference. For the Republicans, at least, there was a huge faction within them that tried to prevent Trump from being nominated, but they failed. So as far as... <laughs> The difference between the Republicans and the Democrats go, at least the Republicans didn't, <laughs> didn't destroy their own, didn't commit fraud. They tried, right? But it didn't happen. 
for the Democrats, it did, right? So, you, you know, we have to ask ourselves, uh, the choice between the two, really, do you want Democrat or Republican? I personally want neither. I think they're both scam artists. I think both Hillary and Trump are just the face that the puppet masters have put forward, right? Running on fear. Um, so that's my take on Hillary and Trump. As far as the US elections themselves is concerned, as I mentioned, it's, it's, already, it's already set really, right? The, the Democratic nomination was a scam, was fraudulent. That's the second largest uh, election in the United States, right? So if that's a scam, what makes people think that the federal election will not be a scam, right? Voting machine, electronic voting machines aside, right? Because that could easily be controlled. Uh, proprietary software from private companies. Wow, incredible, right? So there was already a scam there with the democratic elections and nominations. Um, as, as far as how the elections should be run, I personally, I agree with uh, many other people that have come out that said elections on every level, on every uh, you know maybe local federal state whatever it may be around the world should have a little box at the bottom saying none of the above right and as far as i know no election has that where you can go in there and say none of the above uh, for the elections the only way you can decide that you don't like any of the candidates you don't want anyone to govern you right if that is what you choose then you have no choice there's only two ways you can protest the elections really one is not show up and the system regards you as not caring one is to spoil your ballot and the system basically regards you as being too stupid to be able to follow instructions to vote right there should be a third option which is none of the above in every election right that way 100 percent more people will participate and 100 percent People will have more control over their lives, right? Because if, you know, from the electorate, if let's say 80% of the people went in there to vote, and from that 80% decided to say none of the above, then no one that was elected to office will have a mandate to do what, they, what it is their handlers want them to do, right? They would feel, they would fear Instead of the elections, the parties instilling fear in the electorate, right? In the citizens, the citizens would be able to do that to whoever was elected, which is the way it should be, right? So as far as, uh, you know, having to vote, let's say you had to vote you felt it you felt the urge to go on and vote and the only reason if you don't like hillary or trump right the only reason you would do that if you were going to vote for either one was because you're voting out of fear right um so if you had to vote right because you really don't have to vote let's assume you know, from all eligible voters, only 10% showed up to vote. That would be the same as if everyone did it en masse, that would be the same as saying none of the above, right? But that's not gonna happen because people are running running with fear, right? That's one thing the, the two-party system is trying to do, is trying to get people to go vote for them based on fear from the other person, right? So if you didn't feel that fear, right if the majority of the people didn't feel that fear just imagine what would happen if only 10 percent of the population voted my take would be that uh, the handlers of the people in office would not be able to do what it is that they wanted to okay they would fear repercussions 
Um, as far as politics is concerned, okay, well, one thing we have to appreciate is that there is no such thing as politics by itself, okay? Politics and economics have to be spoken in the same breath. They're one system, right? So there is no such thing as just politics and there is no such thing as economics, just economics. There's one thing called politics and economics. It's more, it's like basically science where there is no such thing as space by itself and time by itself. There's only one thing called space time. Politics and economics works the same way. So for us to be able to understand politics, we have to understand economics, okay? And the present system that we're in right now um, what's happened is basically economics trumps politics, which basically means that all political decisions are based on economic gains, based on measures in economics, such as GDP and growth and this and that, which basically uh, they're meaningless because they don't, um, economics is not a hard science, right? It's people getting together and creating formulas based on some economic type of model and presenting that model and following a model and hopefully that model works out there's a lot of economic models that have collapsed over the years which one of them we're in the midst of right now right so the present system that we're in right now the political system is governed by economics right economics is trumping politics right if you think about a teeter-totter economics is up here politics is way 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 down it's become irrelevant right and there's a word for this system and i didn't know there was a word for the system I, until i came across uh chris hedge's work where he was uh quoting referring to sheldon wallen i believe his work and this system where economics trumps politics is called inverted totalitarianism powerful word right it means a lot and that is exactly the type of system political system economic politics system that we're in right now and if you want, you know, there's a lot of examples of it, of uh, um, where economics trumps politics. And politics, you know, incorporates human rights and what's right and, you know, the environment, what's good for the people and all of that jazz, right? Economics, the only thing it looks at is gains, monetary gains, profit, growth, right? And if you want two examples of this, one of them comes from Canada and there's plenty but one of them comes from canada where the previous government the conservative harper government um, actually came out and stated that all scientific funding from that moment on i believe this happened in 2012 13 something like this all scientific funding was going to be based on economic gain which is insane right which is absolutely absurd some of the greatest economic gains that we have had in our society some of the greatest benefits we have had in our society that has come through science has not been through scientific projects that have been funded because they had economic gains <laughs> they were they came to us because scientists were doing what scientists do they were thinking about systems coming up with hypotheses testing those hypotheses seeing where they went okay some of the greatest scientific gains some of the greatest technologies in our society have come to us through accidents right so when the harper government the previous canadian government the conservatives came out and said they were only going to be funding scientific projects that had future economic gains uh that's one of the best examples of inverted totalitarianism I've ever seen, right? They also said the same thing about their foreign policy. Basically, they came out and said their foreign policy is going to be based on economics, right? So that's one example from Canada. Another example would be one from the United States where uh, the president, um, Obama, at, you know it's 2016 they were asked why they were selling weapons to saudi arabia which is one of the most brutal dictatorships in the world human history really right which is waging one of the most brutal wars uh, ever in yemen right that is funding terrorists up to yin yang that is spreading extremism 
around the globe, right? So the present administration in the United States was asked why they're doing this. And the reply was, because there's economic gains, right? Because the majority of the states in the United States have some kind of, I believe all of them do actually, because it's a military industrial complex, really. So they made sure that they have factories and interests in every state so they can control some of the some of the discourse, right? So when asked why the United States was supplying weapons, billions upon billions of dollars of weapons to a brutal dictatorship that is waging war on one of the poorest countries in the world and killing tens of thousands of people and displacing hundreds of thousands, right? Why the present administration, the foreign policy of the United States has been to help in refueling Saudi planes that they have sold to Saudi Arabia, refueling them in the air so they can continue their bombing mission. Their reply was because it has economic gains, right? So those are two examples of inverted totalitarianism that I just top of my head that come up recently, right? There are many, many others. So be able to, to be able to understand politics, our present pro political system, we have to understand economics and how our economic system is running. Okay. In regards to our economic system, uh, it should be obvious by now that it's totally uh, fixed, right? It's a scam. And 2008 financial collapse, I guess, if you want to call it that. I call it the biggest theft in world history, right? The 2008 economic collapse uh, should have proven that to everyone. The following bailouts, which weren't into the hundreds of billions of dollars, they were into the trillions of dollars, right? The bailouts were into the trillions of dollars. All of that should have shown to people that the economic system is rigged. It's rigged so money flows to the top, right? And now, um, at this point I really wanna make is, um, all the so-called pundits and the mainstream media, uh, when the economic collapse happened, and years afterwards, and even right now, they, they keep on saying that, you know, no one could have predicted that happening. And that's a fallacy, that's false. There were many people that warned about what was going to happen. They predicted what was going to happen, okay? And uh, the people that brought on this economic collapse knew what was coming, right? They lobbied governments to pass laws to protect themselves from what was coming. And one of the best examples of this that I have is the 2005 bankruptcy bill, where uh, banks, Wall Street, okay, they basically uh, lobbied government to pass a law to make it harder for citizens, individuals to declare bankruptcy. And the only reason they did that was because they knew that there was a serious economic shift that was about to come right um, look into it and if you want I'll give you another example if you want to know how obvious the economic collapse what was what was happening uh, was to people who actually looked at the data uh, when I first started blogging one of the I first started blogging I think the first thing I put out was 2005 uh, and then I started really getting into politics economics in 2006 and heavy into 2007 um, one of the articles, uh, my main articles that I updated a few times, I started it off by pulling together some of the other pieces that I had written. One of them was about the 2005 uh, bankruptcy bill, but I pulled together some of the pieces that I had written. And the title of that piece was Collapsing the Economy in the Build-Up to World War III. Okay, 11, it started off as 
collapsing the economy in the build-up to World War III, seven of the most important economic events of the last seven years. I believe I put that out at, towards the end of 2006, 2007. And then I did a couple of more updates and called them collapsing the economy to the build-up to World War III, 10 of the most important economic events of the last 10 years, and collapsing the economy to the build-up to World War III, 11 of the most important economic events of the last 11 years, right? So if me, behind a computer, while I'm working full-time and doing other things, can do the research to see the economic collapse coming two years before this, before it actually hit, I actually saw it coming before that, but I really didn't get into uh, presenting the information until 2006, 2007, right? Because it takes a while to put the stuff together, right? If I can see that coming, I can guarantee you Wall Street and Congress saw it coming. They protected themselves, right? I left everyone else, hung them out to dry, really, right? And they passed the laws to make sure that they could bail themselves out and not you. Okay. So we have to look at politics in terms of economics right now because we're in a system called inverted totalitarianism. Okay. Um, as far as, uh, you know, a couple other things I want to touch on, which would be, uh, you know, if you're getting your main news from if mainstream media uh, you're going to be in the dark uh, so uh, for anyone still watching mainstream media uh, mainstream news um, I'm assuming that's where the question has come my way regarding you know if it's Hillary or Trump and that's the reason I'm making this video uh, you need to stop watching mainstream news and if you are going to watch it, make sure you're only watching it when there is an analysis being done on it to um, help you see what's not being said, to read between the lines. Okay. And um, more and more people are doing this, of course. The majority of people are doing this. If you I looked at this uh, a few years ago when I was still writing politics, uh, political articles, but I believe it you know 2012 2011 or something like this um, and basically the viewership of mainstream media was getting older and older and older and older every year is getting older the last time I looked at it which was a few years ago I believe um, the average age of viewers for Fox News was like around around 50 years old it was insane right uh, unfortunately um, well it's it's getting older and older and they're becoming irrelevant right so where I mainly get my news is from individual, uh, it's basically all online. I don't have cable, I don't watch cable TV, right? I watch shows, right? Uh, especially comic book shows, right? Uh, series, right? But cable news, uh, I only come across cable news and I sparingly, um, just to see what, what's not being said and just to see what some of the excuses are that uh, you know little snippets here and there of uh, why governments are justifying some of the things that they are doing right um, and one place that uh, uh, and the mainstream tries to dismiss uh, actual facts actual research is they uh, try to dismiss people and concepts uh, regarding uh, conspiracies I guess right so they use the word conspiracy theory to dismiss discussion right to prevent discussion right um, and that's uh, something that uh, people are wearing with a badge of honor now right whenever I talk with someone if, if they turn to me and conspiracy theory is just a word that was created by governments to dismiss argument right to dismiss facts right so whenever you know i talk with people and they say oh you believe in conspiracies you know the simple fact is conspiracies exist right people have been arrested taken to trial and convicted of committing conspiracies it's, it's actually 
a fact. It's a word. It's like, oh, you believe in the sun? You believe in the moon? It's, it's weird, right? So whenever someone comes to me and says, oh, you, you believe in conspiracies, instantaneously I know that their information, what they know or think they know, has come from mainstream media. So I tread lightly because uh, they don't know very much, right? They've been programmed just to parrot, regurgitate things that they have no concept, understanding of. So anyone who uses the phrase sprouted by mainstream media and politicians to dismiss, most politicians, are right, to dismiss an argument, has been programmed to obey, obey authority, which is a very, very dangerous thing. Okay, so as far as acquiring information news, um, uh, knowing what's happening, so you can make plans, right? And this is the main reason that I'm making this video and replying to the comments, the questions that come my way is because for us individuals, for us to be able to plan, to be able to uh, protect ourselves from what we're about to get hit by economically and politically, we have to know how it came to be and who is responsible. Okay. So if you really want to make make sure you're successful if you want to make sure that uh, your business runs properly if you have a job in the future uh, your main source of information should not be mainstream news not by a long shot okay. um, uh, as far as uh, one thing i, I do want to address as well uh, when it comes to jobs and immigration and, uh, and it's related to the economy and politics of course because they're one thing economics and politics so it's really related to inverted totalitarianism where economics is trumping politics right um, one of the main focuses in the world where politicians are really pushing their agenda is to protect people's jobs and to prevent immigration what not uh, as far as jobs is concerned uh, no politicians is going to protect your job the only way you can protect your job is to be informed of the technological advancements that we are doing and there's a lot of a huge shift in technology that's happening right now um, so you have to be sort of tech not savvy but you have to understand how all the technological investments that we're we're going through right now how they're they are going to affect you right some of the places we've seen this is through print media right um, through broadcast media right um, we're going to see this huge through automation right we've seen it through optimization where um, productivity has gone up but people's wages have at best stayed stagnant and gone down right when real terms is concerned right productivity hasn't gone up because people are working 15 hours instead of eight hours because people are working faster productivity has gone up because of technology and that in turn has stagnated wages right through technology to a certain degree right uh, because uh, we live in inverted totalitarian states where profits for the corporation matter more than protection and lifestyle for the individual, right? So you have to be aware of the technological investments that we're going through right now. One of the main areas that we have to be uh, really aware of is um, automation, right? And that's coming, and it should come because no one really wants to stand in a factory line nailing and 
you know, hammering and a nail for this one product that they don't really, you know, have, they can't even afford to buy, right? Automation is not a bad thing. How we deal with automation is important. And that's where the politics comes in, right? There's lots of theories out there uh, regarding how we should proceed into the future. Um, I'm not advocating one or the other. I just think we should be aware of what the choices are. Okay. As far as um, immigration is concerned, uh, refugees and whatnot, uh, that comes into politics and governed by economics. And the main gist of it is this. Uh, there are millions of refugees being created and tens of millions right, of refugees right now in the world. The majority of them we in the West are responsible for. The countries that have created, that are the source of most of the refugees in the world are Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Libya, Africa, huge portions of Africa. All of those countries are countries that we have bombed to smithereens. Okay. So we are responsible for the huge influx of refugees into the Western world. Okay. And it goes beyond that the what's happening right now with our economic system with our political system is the whole world is in large part being gentrified and it doesn't make a difference if you're in a poor nation or a rich nation the countries that we have bombed destroyed they're creating they're the source of a lot of refugees maybe from them or from their surrounding countries coming in and uh, declaring that they're refugees from a certain state, right? Because once we stabilize, once you totally destroy a nation, all the countries surrounding that nation are also destabilized and refugees start being created there, right? So the whole world, from the countries that we've bombed to rich countries, are being gentrified. New York is being gentrified, gentrified. Vancouver has been completely gentrified, right? And it's being gentrified because of economic policies, because of money laundering. Like Vancouver is basically, and a lot of the hubs where real estates have prices have ballooned, are basically bubbles that have been created because money from other nations are being uh, laundered through that system right so in Vancouver there are people that are extremely well off right millionaires are being gentrified out of their neighborhoods okay so the whole world is being gentrified so there's a whole shift happening right now of people moving and migrating and doing a shift which is something that are present sort of crony capitalistic inverted totalitarian system brings about right where economics trumps politics monetary gain profits trump everything right so when politicians um, people come out and say point the finger towards refugees towards these people who are moving into their neighborhoods and gentrifying their neighborhood uh, the fault doesn't come from them. Okay. The fault comes from with the system. And that's something we really, really have to grasp. Because as soon as we grasp that, we can decide not to become gentrified and make a stand and hold on to our communities. Because that's where one of the solutions lies to everything that's happening, which is localization, cooperation, cooperatives, right? to to share right not to take but to share okay and that's sort of brings us to you know i don't you know i want to leave this on a positive note um where it comes to uh what some of the solutions are to our problems and for me uh, i've sort of taken it down to 
um, education, which is one of the reasons I'm creating all the math content that I'm creating, because I believe everyone should be literate in the language of mathematics, because once we're literate in the language of mathematics, then we can understand economics and control politics, right? Have a say in the politics of our societies, right? So for me, I've taken it down to the level of education because our education system in the West specifically that I know of in Canada and the United States is horrendous, 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 right? Just to give you an example, in British Columbia, um, the math curriculum in British Columbia, Math 12 specifically, in the last 10 years has been gutted. Okay. 10 years ago, they would teach 20, 25% more content in Math 12 than they do now. They eliminated two main chapters from the Math 12 cur curriculum, just gone, okay? And they also gutted some of the other chapters. One of the most important chapters that was eliminated from the education system was statistics from grade 12 education. So people are graduating from high school without understanding statistics, without understanding graphs, charts, right? And if you don't understand graphs, charts, statistics, data, then you have no say in economics. You have no idea how economics is functioning, right? How economics is done. And if you do not understand economics, you have no say in your politics. So the best you can do is vote for either Trump or Hillary. That is insane. So that's one way. Uh, to change the system uh, that we're governed under. Um, another way is to take things locally, uh, food locally, right? Uh, shop locally, prevent from multinational conglomerates from opening a shop in your neighborhoods, right? Stop shopping in the multinational conglomerates, right? It could be difficult, but it's worthwhile, okay? Um, eating better food, is one way you could do it. Growing your own food is one way you can do it. Because in the United States specifically, the main reason, the main culprit for people declaring bankruptcy and going into the abyss, really, is because of health issues, health problems, right? And that is really connected with the food we consume in large part in the environment that we live in, right? If you consume better food, your health will start to improve, right? Even by the smallest amount is an improvement. That reduces the cost you have to bear to get healthy again, right? So, you know, food, and that's connected to the pharma industry, to the healthcare industry, and how pharma big pharma is just gouging gouging it's just destroying uh, people's finances right just taking all they can and just running because they really big pharma in large part uh, the healthcare system is not geared towards healing people it's geared towards getting as much money out of people as they can which in large part means keeping them healthy enough so they can earn money to pay the bills they need to pay to buy the drugs they need to buy to keep them working as long as they can to make money so they can buy the drugs and so on and so forth there's a loop right so you want to keep your customers dependent on you as long as you can okay um there there's a lot more really uh, but I really don't want to go any deeper than this into the rabbit hole. Uh, I've written a lot about it. And this is most likely going to be the last uh, uh, politics post I make. If you're, if you're subscribed to my channel uh, for the mathematics specifically, um, because we live in this system, which is sort of an inverted totalitarian system where economics drops politics. I'm going to approach politics, politics through mathematics. I will be creating a playlist 
um, <coughs> um, explaining how our how our economic system works, mainly uh, talking about the indicators, some of the formulas, um, and it's really all ratios, right? Uh, because that's what Wall Street is, it's just talking about ratios, right? PE, growth rate, GDP, and all this jazz, right? They're all just numbers that economists, people use to decide where they want to park their money, right? For money to beget money, which is a weird thing, right? Money begetting money, which is where we are right now. Those who have had money, um, sort of a concept of compounded interest, right? And those who don't are... Uh, there's nowhere for them to go in this economic system right now that we have right um, I hope that answers your question um, those of you who've been asking me uh, if it's Hillary or Trump it's neither um, if I had to vote I would hope that there's a box at the end of the ballot that would say none of the above and if there isn't and I if you really feel inclined to go and vote, um, I would say um, don't vote out of fear. Vote with love, right? With respect. And vote for the person that you like or love or respect the most. Uh, and for me, it's neither Hillary or Trump. All you have to do is look at Trump's history and look at Hillary's history. Really, look at Hillary's history, right? look at what we did to Libya right? just one more thing regarding politics uh, as far as Libya is concerned there's a lot of NGOs and a lot of organizations a lot of companies and a lot of governments and a lot of war being waged in Africa right and just to appreciate the hypocrisy involved and in all that so-called help going to Africa right uh, we in the West, right? France uh, had a huge part to play in this, and Hillary Clinton had a huge part to play in this, and Canada had a part to play in this. But we in the West took the country with the highest standard of living in all of Africa, which was Libya. And that's saying a lot because Africa, the continent of Africa is huge, right? If you look at it on a flat map, you know, it looks like the size of the United States a little bit bigger, but it's much, much bigger than that, right? You could fit the United States, Germany, China, Italy, and a whole bunch of other countries inside of all of Africa, right? So we in the West took the country with the highest standard of living in all of Africa and we destroyed it, annihilated right bombed it to smithereens to a level right now where there's three governments competing with each other to run libya one of them has recently asked the united states to bomb some of the other governments two other governments and some of the other factions um, for them on their behalf and those governments in libya they're not really governments they're puppets that have been still installed by whoever is controlling them right so we took the country with the highest standard of living in all of Africa and we annihilated it. And then we have the audacity to come in and say that we want to help Africa, right? And um, if, if you want to know my take on what's happening in Africa, because that's, uh, I think that's huge, right? Because the next scramble for resources and control is, is Africa. Asia as well, Asia Minor and stuff like this, and some parts of the Middle East, but Africa is huge. Um, I took the time to put together a piece uh, for Africa, calling it The Future of Africa Looks Bleak. Here is why. It's like three or four part write up, sort of summarizing of what's happening in Africa up to at least, I think, 2012 or something, 2013. That's when I stopped, I believe, writing about politics. Okay. Um, and you know that's where the political thing is 
um, and I'll link that up in the description of the of this video if you want to take a look at it and see what's coming for Africa and what has what has come to Africa okay and as far as um, voting goes if there is no box to say um, none of the above and if you're so inclined to go vote and if you're not voting out of fear if you're voting out of love like respect for me personally if I was going to go inside the voting booth uh, for the US elections I would be voting for Jill Stein without a doubt because she is authentic she is sincere and she has the best interest of the individual in mind and not the corporation okay uh, that's it for now um, I hope uh, this video doesn't uh, rustle too many feathers I hope um, that if you've been subscribed uh, you continue to be subscribed um, because this is the last politics video I will be making um, the main focus of, of this channel of this site uh, is going to be sharing things that I love uh, not propagating fear and hate right which is what our political system has turned into okay so the main discussion here will be <coughs> comic books well mathematics is a math centric channel that I've created and it will continue to be a math centric channel so mathematics comic books ASMR food music and what are else uh, random that I come across that I think uh, I would love to share okay I hope to you know this answers your questions if um, you wanted to know what my take was regarding uh, Hillary or Trump uh, okay mm. uh, that's sort of uh, what my take is right and if you want to know more you know dig a little deeper uh, into what's coming uh, irrelevant of Hillary or Trump just look at the trade deals that our governments are involved in and take a look at the repercussions of those trade deals and once they go through what will happen to our lifestyles okay. that's it for now hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video